Hello and welcome. Today is Tuesday, 24th day of October 2017. My name is Derek and welcome. Let's take a look at the precious metals, the US dollar index, silver, gold, starting with the United States dollar index. Everything you do is within your own risk and your own reward. And there is an, in, an inverted head and shoulders pattern, which is very close to completing its pattern on the daily time frame with the left shoulder being located in here the head in here and a right shoulder in here i need to see a break of the neckline for the pattern to complete and for me to be one to be aggressive into thinking there's going to be a decent break or a good leg higher from the resistance point a little north of 94 I would like to see it much more north of 94 well over 94 and a half or in that area and then you would be considering a high probability if you're at around 94 for 94 40 94 50 94 60 ballpark area that you're going to probably even break through the 95s and even the 96s as a possibility. We'll look at other time frames to determine where the possible uh, situation or possible targets would lie around. Looking towards the contrary, I'm going to do it on two different levels. The first level, it really doesn't break resistance and it does break the support at 9280. That's a clear established key level. And this would tell me that you'd at least have a test out of 91, but this would most likely be nothing more than a bear flag when you look at it. Unlike the weekly chart, which I'm going to be going to in a little while. Furthermore, thinking a few plays ahead, as chess players, they have to think so many plays ahead, and this is an example of doing such. If you ever do see a situation like this, you have this clear resistance level, and you break it. Usually you're going to get a noticeable break, but nothing too big. And 94, 50, 60-ish area, where I was stating, if you see that high probability, it's going to go much higher compared to much lower in the near term. But I've talked about bull flags, bear flag, or failed breakouts, failed breakdowns. That would be one thing to look at if you have that move where you have a gain like that you you and then you see further selling that usually within not so many periods five six seven something quick even less that you've had a good clear break of the 18 average of lows that is something to consider as well but in the event that you do have much higher prices on this dollar index going probably to at least 97 then you would probably see precious metals sell off a little bit, at least, during that time frame. And as far as cryptocurrencies are concerned, in general overall Bitcoin prices will probably not mean much at all. However, it would uh, if you're in a country's abroad, the, your currencies would be uh, getting weaker against U.S. dollar probably, and that would mean your Bitcoin price would be worth higher as your precious metals and so on and so forth but of course because they'd be going down uh, silver would be going down in u.s dollars you'd see a situation where maybe silver might have a two percent uh down day against the u.s dollar and other currencies would be 1.5 1.4 percent there'd be a lot of situations like that if the dollar index makes any moves in the 96s 97s which it has the capability of doing if it does break the neckline and within the weekly time frame, if we're looking at any rallies up towards here, we'll mainly be talking about making what you would be expecting from this breakdown is after it bottoms. And bottoms and tops are known after the fact. This is now a bottom because if I see something go the 18 average like this, that means it has corrected from that leg lower. So therefore, when you're having a big sell-off from this top, what you are expecting at huge probability odds that it is very likely you make a lower high within the next rally. What would be weak? 
as if all you're able to do is tangle a little bit within the 18 average and fall, which I will state furthermore, if you don't break resistance or if you do have that failed breakout, then it would be a very weak scenario to have this decline, the correcting trading within the average within such and then to fall that the probability odds of breaking down below this support of a decent sized moves, big red candles would be pretty decent. And that would be the, uh, the US dollar index chart. Let's move it over to the Canadian cross with the US dollar. And I'm putting this up because I think it's very relevant within the silver market. And we've seen a situation in which after this rally, it has been failing the 18 average which really doesn't mean too much to me in this situation because i got to look furthermore. And what I see furthermore is price action. Like I stated with the dollar index, at some point it's got to make what you would think would be that uh, lower high. Well, here's a situation where I'm expecting a higher low from this level. And now the highs and tops known after the fact, after the fact, this is a high. So I'm expecting a higher low. I realize that 38.2, 61.8% corrections can very easily keep this market alive. Thus, I can talk about, obviously, the first low here at the start of 2016. There's a higher low into 2017. And then what would be the next one after that? And price action is currently at this level from which it came from. And you can say it ranges from here up to, of course, where we're already at right now. But for me, what's really important here is the longer term chart. As I've been talking about, this has been very much a, very, a good indicator within the precious metals on the direction in which they go. If this goes up, the metals go up, down, same thing again. And I've been talking about this for many months now. And there's a situation where resistance was broken. So is this going to be a possible failed breakout? Maybe. Maybe not. As I talked about the higher low, well, here I have the situation where resistance has been established for reversal of trend. I mean, er earlier before, the band flattened out. Now I need to see a comeback to the band, and it's close. It's getting closer. And this... I mean, not, not like everyone uses the 18 average. And I see this price action in here. 77 doesn't really surprise me too much. Or even just a little small further decline to 78. That would hit this gap in here with these highs, either or. And that's very, it, it wouldn't be a surprise to see it and have some sort of uh, high or high come in like that. And when you see something like that, you would expect bull market within, of course, the precious metals. And then if there is that failed breakout, fast move to the downside, the US dollar index would probably be doing well. And maybe there might be a washout on the precious metals markets. So I'm not going to say what is more probable than the other, but there is a reason why I do hold the physical commodity silver. Let's bring that chart up now. And we'll start within the daily chart. And I don't want to talk too much about it because this has been relatively choppy for the last thousand or so days last three, three years or so and it's been in this sideways consolidation up down below to me either it's going to continue doing this and that is a welcome invitation to keep on accumulating at some very good low prices because when i talk about this longer term chart I'm going to talk about why I think that would be really, really cool. And if it keep if it happens to go higher, well, it's been due and it has been due for a long time. Because back in the start of this chart, when it was this was March of 2015, people were saying, "Oh my goodness, it's been down for almost four years." And now it's been over six, six and a half years since the last time the $50 high was hit, where the last two times 50 was hit were both now, as far as levels are concerned, long term. I'm going to bypass on the weekly chart because it is also very choppy, but I will go now straight to the monthly. And 
we'll talk about the dollar index. I suppose if it has a decent sized bounce from the inverted head and shoulders pattern and makes some sort of lower high, then you're probably going to test somewhere within this 15-ish uh, area, maybe even break below it a little bit, as that would be a significant area. There's always a possibility of a washout breaking this. And I would guess if a washout does happen below this big support level, it will not last long and be very similar to how it was in 2008. That's how I would think, but that doesn't necessarily mean how it would go or if it's even going to occur. Because as I've talked about reversal of trend and I've talked about this pattern now for a couple of years, it seems. Step one, band flattening out. This is the start. That happened at the start of 2016. Then into 2016, it got up to $21 an ounce U.S., so we're looking at a year and a half ago now. So next step, come back to the band. And it's done that. But how many periods has it been going within such? Which is explaining the choppy action. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is period number 12. One full year of correcting within this sideways neutrality band on the silver chart. Preceding such was a bear market that was in place for, we'll say, we'll, we'll go from here. That was 20, middle of, close to 2013. So therefore a little over three year bear market. Preceding that was the attempt to correct a decent large gain. And that lasted for about a year. Preceding that was a secular, beautiful bull market. This was from the 2008 lows to the 2011 highs. Therefore, the duration of time for that was under three years. After a sharp sell-off over just three months or so. And then decent-sized bull market from here. The whole thing has just been correcting sideways, correcting this sell-off for the last little while, while this entire thing has been a correction of this entire rally. And that's why I think if there's going to be that kind of washout phase, it's just going to stay within any, it's just going to get more choppy and I don't think the lower prices can maintain itself and of course having higher prices come in if they if they the people who make the markets move decide that's not the case well that that will not be the case but i think regardless of let me just change this chart out a little bit so i can uh, show some more room to draw around post this period and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to draw it if things would have not taken so long within the correctionary phase. So you come down to this point, you come in here, you have, say, this red uh, sideways candle, but let's instead of assuming this was a red candle down move, maybe it managed to make some sort of play something like that. And now what I'm going to do is show you why it doesn't make uh, much of a difference overall if the markets stay within this, we'll say, teenage price level, 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, teenage year numbers for a, a significant period of time compared to a normal market moving. So, so let's assume this even goes into the 20s and does something like that just keeps on going sideways. Meanwhile, I was giving the example of what would have happened if, say, this did not occur at, uh, over the most uh, last few months. And instead, maybe it might have done something like this. And then, oh, big breakout because we're back to this resistance. Then maybe it might pull back. Oh, go up here. And now we're back up to the 50, or maybe our 55 even. If the event now comes in where OMG, things are about to explode, 
if we're talking about now say going into the next little bit this thing would go from like probably like 55 to like who knows 300 or 400 and then this is going to go from like 20 to who knows 300 400 and this is a type of example i think for why it would not matter at the uh, price level you get it at right now because it's just going to make it towards those points but if you ever get a chance to be able to buy it so cheap it just makes it worthwhile and quite frankly it has been that case i think for quite some time on a double level the first level is because it's been doing this for quite some time and has given ample opportunity ample time and actually ample opportunities to be able to acquire the physical silver at well below twenty dollars per ounce us but as well this thing was 50 bucks in 1980 and has really been manipulated down for quite some time that it's been a bargain both for the short term, mid term, as well as the very, very long term. So, so many levels and there's been a lot of silver people talking about, myself included, how this can get into high three digits, into four digits when this thing really goes off. And we've seen within the cryptocurrency markets, if you haven't, there has been gains within such where markets can go up so high so fast. I'm going to show you an Ethereum chart against the US dollar. And this is a span time frame on the daily that went from late 2016 to earlier this year only that of under one year prices in here hovering at around seven eight bucks in here at around 10 then again at a 12 and here that goes up to 400 that large of a gain in that short of a period of time and a movement like this in the silver market with pretty much around the same x kind of gain would not sh surprise me or shock me if an event like that too will occur. So now we're talking about, let's just multiply these numbers by four. Let's assume silver, when this thing really gets going because it's get, been kept down up until like say 2021 or 22 or whenever, even next month or next year, it could easily do it like this. And that's where we got like $20 prices uh, and then it just shoots higher. And let's just assume the break of 20 would be like say in even here which is like 10 so this would be like 640 in that type of volatile sense and now back to the silver chart back to the daily and it's safe to say now that my prediction unless this thing really takes off soon for silver to get going and the bottom is in and the bear market's over, bull market beginning, which even means the neutrality is coming to an end, is incorrect. Albeit, if this does find support in here, breaks this resistance, comes up here, maintains a bullish trend, breaks this resistance and heads into 20, I kind of will still be right. But... It's not looking too well right now, I think, for any kind of prices to really break high, well north of 20 in the next year or two, year, year and a half. It very easily can, but it's looking less and less likely. And I do welcome the opportunity to keep on being able to buy at these levels because the lower this stays down and the more Bitcoin prices rise and the cheaper this becomes within that form. And I kind of wonder how that's going to work if this remains such because it is very easy to accumulate the silver when you have more Bitcoins, they're worth so much more. And you're like, oh my goodness, I, be f I bought like one for 0 0.15 Bitcoin before. I remember getting something like 26 ounces of silver. Now I'm looking to get maybe a kilo, which is maybe uh, 32, and it's actually like 0 0.11 or something like that. And then later on, when Bitcoin prices are going higher, are much higher, you're talking about 
Wow, I remember getting a kilo uh, coin for uh, 0.11. Now we can get a 100-ounce bar for 0.11. How you doing kind of deal. And when that type of stuff goes through my mind, I, I, doesn't, I don't care what other people do, but what I'll be doing is buying more and more. So I've had different goals for how many ounces of silver that I wanted, and I've been able to maintain it, and I've increased it a second time. I've been able to surplus the number that I've wanted, which is over 500 ounces of silver. Now my next goal is to make one order, with each of my orders getting larger and larger, being that of a monster box, which is 500 ounces of silver. Thus, when you count how much you would add from this stage, getting your weight in silver and then times more might become not such a difficult thing to do if, of course, these prices stay lower over 2018, 2019. And we'll move this into gold. And with the risk as far as holding Bitcoin to try to accumulate silver or and or gold on the situation of this not being the case and not being able to buy at these subpar cheap prices when the decade turns, then this thing would obviously have to shoot up higher. And in gold's case, resistance is easily noticeable and its upward target if it breaks is really this trading range in here with the, this little range that separates it being basically air or a good likelihood that if it breaks it, the distance from, this could be a big green candle from this rectangular distance. But I have to think the likelihood if the precious metals does resume any type of bull market like this, that the cryptocurrencies would become very, very bullish. Because there's really only one way that this can happen within the human consciousness, and that is for the news all around on the weak currency states, which is thus driving precious metals higher, and there will be a rush for people to get out of the currencies. And I think that would do well for uh, Bitcoin as well. And I don't think there's enough silver and gold out there for people really to sell off with cryptocurrencies that can really destroy the Bitcoin price. Where, say you see this happen where gold's break of the 13, 1400, heck, even breaking the 1900, uh, 20, uh, 11 resistance top. Maybe see 25, 26. And maybe silver goes to, say, 100. Well, it's possible at that stage that maybe it could work pretty poorly holding Bitcoin. But I don't think it would be too bad. Because if, say, it's 2,600 gold, how long is it going to take to get there? This is the monthly chart. Year, year and a half. I don't see any huge... It could happen, but I, I don't see any huge green candles that's like, oh, $500 up month or 25% up month, 30% up month, or a four-month period where it doubles. I don't think that's going to happen. It, it could, but it's so unlikely. And even if it does, that would be interesting how cryptos would react. But if this did go to 2,600, say, in a span of, say, uh, into early 2019, then it probably would be likely that silver would be closer to 100. Because when you have a huge increase within these precious metals and both gold and silver going up together, you're going to have situations where, oh, what, do you see that month for gold? It went up like 11%. Wow. Yeah, silver went up 18% that month. And then in a little while, oh, what a day for gold, up 7%. What did silver do? Oh, 25% up. Wow. That's the type of movement. So the ratio here would be 26 to 1 in a spot like that. But what would Bitcoin be? 
would it safe to say that Bitcoin could be under 10,000? I actually wouldn't think so. I would kind of think that we would be talking at least $25,000 Bitcoin. If the time duration to get there is in that of around 14, 15, 16 months, probably even closer to 20 plus. And then with all the time, Bitcoin would have to move in all the devaluation of the US and other world of fiat currencies to get to that stage. I don't think that it would really retrace much at all to hurt the silver to a Bitcoin ratio. In a situation like this, the ratio, if it was, say, hypothetically, $25,000 for Bitcoin, $2,600 for gold, and $100 for silver, the ratio would be 250 to 1. Right now, it's over 300. So that's where I'm stating there's little risk in that level for that play. Of course, there's the big risk where Bitcoin just really crumbles and then it doesn't matter at that stage because it uh, turned out to be a bubble. But I don't think a bubble for Bitcoin is going to happen, at least not in the near term. But there's definitely nothing to say that gold and silver can have its moment coming soon where it basically bottoms against Bitcoin and it will just keep on outperforming it from that point from there on in. That could happen at any point. I do think there's actually going to come a time in the more distant future, and I think this is going to be after the major devaluation of the fiat currencies or the fiat currency collapse, where if the situation like that happens, you're just using other money. And of course, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, Litecoins are going to be a big example of such. That there's going to be a time where gold and silver against those are just going to just scorch higher and higher talked about the Bitcoin to silver ratio back when it was even 150 going to like a thousand or 800 900 just a sick high number here we standing at like 300 and something 350 or uh, just some large number so then you get to a situation where maybe the US dollar isn't or barely in existence for trade and cryptocurrencies are huge into such and people are flocking into silver and gold. And next thing you know, this ratio goes from 1,000 back down to 150. I think, and, and who knows how big of a fall that could happen because you could have a complete cryptocurrency collapse at that stage where maybe it goes from like 1,000 to like 15 or some sort of outrageous number like that because the movements of cryptocurrencies, quite frankly, that it, to me is very outrageous, extremely outrageous. The fact that these things that are like just made in the computers like that are worth what they are people are actually asking to buy them and you can sell them so easy and they just keep scorching in value i mean that is like really okay and then we have a situation in which we've had these silver prices gold prices manipulated within these levels and maintained for quite some time okay it's real. So to have future situations like this with uh, major moves to these kinds of degrees, to me, is only to be expected. Now I'm going to finish this off by uh, talking about, well, in the crypto land, they have a thing called the USDT, which is the United States Dollar Tether. And what people do in the crypto land is they'll sell their cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum for the Tether, the US dollar, and then they can... Uh, hold that and such and buy other cryptocurrencies back. Some me mechanism of shorting the uh, crypto game. But I'm surprised that it hasn't happened yet and I think it still will in the near term. I'm hoping sometime, sometime soon in the next many months that you'll have something, whether it actually is backed by something or even if it's not, maybe a GLDT, an SLVT, a gold tether, a silver tether, where in the crypto case, you can sell your Bitcoins and Ethereums and all that, even your US dollar tethers, and get into the gold and silver. But it would pretty much be the same thing. And again, maybe you can get gold and silver with those cryptos that you get that way, which would be cool either way. But I think what something like that were to happen, 
then they that would really get a lot of people in the crypto space aware a little bit more within gold and silver as well. I think that'd be just really interesting, and I'm very surprised as of now that there isn't any, as far as my recognition, any type of e easily tradable cryptocurrency gold and silver tokens in which mirror their actual price, like the USDT mirrors the price of the US dollar. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.